Hello, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Life and Surround. Hopefully you're staying safe through this coronavirus time. My county has been put on shelter in place, and that may be the situation for many of you. And um, if it isn't already, it could be coming to your area, the um, shelter in place type of mandates. The state I live in is even talking about the possibility of martial law. So the situation seems to be uh, ramping up every day. And anyway, uh, hopefully this video and other videos that you enjoy can be part of uh, what helps you get through this time to pass the time and to hopefully enjoy yourself to the extent possible. So. I didn't want to ignore the fact that the um, coronavirus is out there and there are a lot of people infected and a lot of people have already died and so that being said <clears throat> it's time today to discuss and review the various surround versions of Machine Head by Deep Purple. I have a UK SACD with a quad mix on it. I have a Japanese SACD with a 5.1 mix on it. And I have my trusty external hard drive called Oppo Food with an older US quad version. And I'll try to discuss the differences between the three. And I'm going to do so off of memory. So hopefully I won't mess it up too badly. And um, before we get too much further along, this is a video um, about a gift from a friend and Life and Surround viewer. So I did want to mention that a few videos back, I talked about a number of gifts that have come in and that I want to get to all of them in videos. So this is one of those videos. And I wanted to get to it now before Ammonia Avenue by the Alan Parsons Project shows up before Script for a Jester's Tear by Marillion shows up. Uh, Mary Falls from the Dark Side of the Moon surround Blu-ray should be coming soon. So to honor that, I'm wearing my Dark Side of the Moon shirt. And also because there's a tie-in with Machine Head, Dark Side of the Moon is another surround title that has received a 5.1 mix and a quad mix. And Machine Head, like I just mentioned a few minutes ago, has a 5.1 mix and not one, but two quad mixes and possibly more, but th these are the three that I know about. All right, so let's get on with it, shall we? Um, as far as I know, back in the day in the 70s, um, Machine Head was mixed to quad in the U.S. because people who have written about it online call it the U.S. quad. And that was put out on 8-track tape called Q8. It was put out in a tape format, reel-to-reel, -reel, and I believe that was called Q4. And it was also put out on an LP format called CD4. And the rip that I got from my friend and I'm not sure how much public credit he wants, but you know who you are, and I really appreciate it. I believe comes from the reel-to-reel -reel tape. So, that's the U.S. quad. And then there's what is known as the U.K. quad. And it appeared on SACD, I believe, in the mid-2000 aughts, like maybe around 2008 or so. And I'm not sure... Um, how it existed previous to that, uh, what formats. So Deep Purple, Machine Head, Quad Historians, please let us know in your comments um, what the lineage is of the UK Quad. But it does exist on Super Audio CD, and this was sent by a friend. It's out of print, it is expensive to find, and it was extremely kind. Um, that one day I got a message just stating um, 
that this friend had an extra copy and I think perhaps I had mentioned somewhere that I wanted to review the mixes head-to-head -head someday and um, offered to send it to me and it was just extremely kind. And it's a treasure to listen to so I'm, I'm really glad that I've had that opportunity. And then around 2001-2002 a DVD audio came out of Machine Head, newly mixed to 5.1, uh, from a gentleman named Charlie Watts, I believe. And if I'm not mistaken, that's also the name of the drummer from Rolling Stones. And uh, probably not the same guy, though. In any case, it was later reissued from CD Japan on Super Audio CD. It's the same mix as the DVD audio. And so, I'm going to talk about the differences in the mix styles. I happen to enjoy them all, and I'm going to state my preference, but my preference doesn't exactly align with a lot of what you'll read online. But sometimes economics comes into play, and the fact of the matter is that this SACD with the 5.1 mix is still available on CD Japan for around $30. And then if you build up some points with them and combine shipping, you can drive even that cost down a little bit. And quite blessedly, I can listen to all three through my Oppo BDP-103, which can play SACD and FLAC files, amongst many other formats. And I'm using an Emotiva XMC200 as my pre-pro and surround controller, and an Emotiva A800 AB amplifier to power some vintage 1990s Klipsch floor standing full range speakers. All right. The differences in the mixes. The US Quad we see has plenty of headroom and each of the channels look like they are receiving a similar volume of music. What I hear in the room is the bass usually up front, the lead vocals usually up front, the majority of the drum kit usually up front, and the rhythm guitars and organ also usually up front. Guitars on the left, organ on the right, as far as I can tell. And from this original US Quad, what I mainly hear in the surrounds is the drum kit wrapping around you. So you're going to get some cymbals, back there and um, there's even a moment I believe during Highway Star when there's a tom-tom roll and it starts in the fronts and ends like in the rear right. So the surrounds in the original US Quad are used to bring the drum kit out into the room. You also get lead guitars back there almost always and that is often used to a very cool effect and then another notable moment with the surrounds is when Ian Gillen comes in on Highway Star. His vocal starts in the rear right, then a overdub appears in the rear left and they sing together, and then finally another overdub appears in the fronts and you hear Ian Gillen like around you in a triangle and it's super awesome. So US Quad has, I would say, most of the band up front most of the time and the surrounds are used judiciously let's say. Then we have the UK quad on Super Audio CD and we can see here that the UK quad has a bit more headroom than the US quad and that could be due to the gain that was set by the person who dubbed their US quad from tape so just bear in mind that if you throw on this UK quad, you're going to want to crank it. And it is out and out the most discreet of the three mixes. And I'm going to show off the uh, SACD here for a minute. It has drums, bass, and lead vocal mainly up front. It has John Lord in surround right and it has Richie Blackmore's rhythm guitars in surround left and 
lead guitars usually when they make their appearance are going to be up in front somewhere. There are moments where uh, the guitar can pan around uh, somewhat actively. And of the three mixes that are available to be found, it definitely to me feels like the parts have the most separation and without having to move my head around and try to listen very intently like I knew very 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 clearly uh, where all the parts were placed in the mix. All right and you know take that for what it's worth. Some people like a lot of uh, discrete separation in their surround mixes and some people want more of a cohesive, held together, um, wall of sound type of experience, and neither one of those views is right. They're just different, and people are going to have their preferences. And so then we get to the uh, Japanese SACD, which, like I said, is the same mix as the DVD audio. like how they printed the album artwork on the disc on this one. And we can see here that the 5.1 mix is mastered pretty darn well. No brick walling. The surrounds aren't quite as loud as the fronts, but uh, they are very present. And all of the parts have quite a bit of headroom. And I think that's part of what makes this 5.1 sound excellent to my ears. What I hear in the room is an experience that is fairly close to the UK quad. Um, I don't hear as much separation, and parts do blend together a bit more, but I did hear the organ focused into the rear right, the rhythm guitar favoring the rear left, lead vocal up front, drums predominantly up front, but coming out into the room a little bit, bass centered up front, and lead guitars mostly showcasing up front, and with um, the occasional active panning moment. It just wasn't as discreetly separated as the UK quad. So my preference, which may not be popular, is actually the uh, Japanese SACD. I like the mixing choices that have been made, and I like for the band to sound like they're all together. I like the power, and I like the sonics of the Japanese SACD. I'm glad that I have the option to put on the UK Quad for its discreteness. Uh, for one thing, you can hear all of the parts played in great detail. So if you're ever curious about exactly what notes are being played, the UK quad is going to be the way to go. And as far as the original US quad is concerned, um, tracking it down is really a matter of finding a buddy who has dubbed either their 8-track or their reel-to-reel -reel or their CD4 LP into a format that they can share with you. I really like each of the three experiences, and I think it's incredibly cool that such an amazing album has received multiple surround mixes that we get to compare and that we get to develop a preference, you know, one over the others. Uh, that, that's a very cool privilege. It should also be said that there are differences um, in actually like what you get across all three formats. The US quad that is dubbed from one of the analog formats is going to be just the original seven songs from the album. The Japanese SACD comes with one bonus track, uh, When a Blind Man Cries, which was a B-side, and I absolutely love that song, so I'm glad that it is um, available in surround now. And the UK quad also comes with When a Blind Man Cries and Maybe I'm a Leo and Lazy 
from the 5.1 mixes. So all three bonus tracks on the UK Quad SACD from EMI are actually from the 5.1. So that's a pretty cool feature. And what else is there to say? Um, I wish that there was more Deep Purple in Surround, but I am glad that we got Machine Head. I am a casual fan of the band, and so I have heard some Greatest Hits type compilations. Machine Head has the majority of my favorite songs. It would be great if we could get In Rock, perhaps. And I think there is a Blu-ray out there, perhaps, of Made in Japan, but I'm just not sure how discreet it is or isn't. So if you happen to know, uh, please chime in. Also, if you are more of a machine head surround historian than I am, and you have information on who did the US quad mix, who did the UK quad mix, um, let us know. Leave your comments below. Um, I'm interested to know more of the legacy of these mixes. And let me see, is there anything else to say? I'm just really grateful that such a foundational album uh, for hard rock and metal has been presented to us in a variety of surround formats. This is such an influential group and an influential album. Ian Gillen uh, was a tremendous influence on Bruce Dickinson, who's one of my favorite singers, and uh, who appears on a later John Lord DVD audio and Blu-ray, which I hope to get to on this channel someday. Uh, I'm not sure what else there is to say. So I'll just wrap up for now. I'll ask you to like this video, leave comments below, subscribe if you haven't, and if you're new to the channel, ring the notification bell. All of these things help the channel uh, get out there the YouTube algorithm will spread the videos to more people, and in turn, um, the love of surround can reach more people. That's the whole point of this channel, is to enjoy surround music together, and especially like during this time where we're supposed to socially isolate, this is a way that we can still be together and still feel like we're just not alone in this world. So I appreciate you watching. I hope that if you don't already have some version of Machine Head in Surround that you'll fix that. And I look forward to hearing what you think about this album in Surround in whatever format you have and whatever format you enjoy best. And with that, I'll just say, per usual, until next time, live life in Surround. Thank you.